from Hollywood, it's the Tom Likas Show. I love it. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. I had this conversation with somebody the other day. I can't remember who it was, but it was a woman. It was a woman that I'm not involved with and not dating, and uh, and we were just having a conversation, just talking. And, of course, the topic eventually gets around to my show and some of the subject matter here. And I said to her the following. I said, if I had any advice to women at all as a group and I'm not kidding and I'm not exaggerating and I'm not saying this for comic effect I really mean it if I had any advice to women at all it would be shut up now that doesn't mean don't say anything it doesn't mean you can't ever talk what it means is women can't stop talking I don't care about the exceptions to the rule. The vast majority of women can't shut up. They talk continuously. And when you get married or you move in with somebody, it's even worse. And most men are like me. Most men like to come home and decompress after a hard day of work, after a stressful day, especially if you do physical labor. I know how it is, boys. I understand. You come home from working at the construction site. You come home from working as a mechanic or you come home after driving a truck. You're not interested in getting into a big chatty Kathy conversation when you walk in that front door. You want some food on the table. You want to take your shoes off, maybe your shirt, and then you want to go lie down somewhere or sit in your favorite lazy boy or whatever. Maybe you chill with some sports and a brew or something. I know how it is. You know, my, my dad had a uh, blue-collar gig where he was a union guy. And I remember when he came home from work, he didn't want people talking to him. He didn't want the kids talking to him. didn't want my mom talking to him. He wanted everybody to just shut up and leave him alone. I remember my Uncle Jerry, who I used to stay with in the summertime because his son, also named Jerry, he was my cousin, um, he was like my big brother. And I used to spend uh, lots of time at their house. And uh, he worked in New York City as a peace officer in the tunnel that goes between Manhattan and Brooklyn. It's called the Brooklyn Battery Tunnel. Carried a gun. And uh, he walked back and forth on the catwalks of the Brooklyn Battery Tunnel in case somebody broke down or there was an accident or a shooting or whatever. Uh, His job was uh, keeping an eye on what was going on in the tunnel. Nowadays, that, that's a job nobody would want since the tunnel lets out right near where the World Trade Center used to be. Yikes. Imagine having to guard that tunnel now. we. He would come home after a day of, uh, by the way, this job was tough. And it was tough in a variety of ways, not the least of which is the decibel level in that tunnel is so bad that half the guys come out of that job uh, with uh, reduced diminished hearing they can't hear it's just this noisy place and so when he came home from work at night he was uh, he reminded me of ralph cramden from the honeymooners if you've ever seen that old tv show the honeymooners with jackie gleason he came in drenched in sweat 
his ears ringing, and he just wanted to go. But this is what he used to do. He used to come home. Before dinner, he would go upstairs, go into the bedroom, close the door, turn the air conditioning on high cool. He'd press the buttons, so he threw the window air conditioner on high cool. And then he would lie down and watch a million dollar movie on Channel 9. That's what he would do. That's what he would do. Every night. And at some point during a million dollar movie, he might come down. And uh, have dinner, or he might have dinner brought up to him on a snack table. And he would sit in his bedroom with the uh, air conditioning on watching Million Dollar Movie and eating dinner off the snack tray. That's it. How many of you guys come home from work and she just won't shut up? She won't shut up. She's always talking. Always. Always talking, always chatting, always leaving voicemails, always sending text messages all day, all night. It never stops. You walk in the door, she doesn't shut up. Now, for me, uh, I was on an even uh, a more outrageous plane at one point. Here I am doing a job like this. I make a good living. Uh, and uh, many of you think my job is really easy, and I just bop in here for four hours and, you know, roll home, and that's all. But in reality, I spent a lot of day of a lot of the day reading material that I end up using on the air. I spend time talking to advertisers or people at the radio station. I have lunches and dinners with ad agencies, clients, media buyers, what have you. I make appearances, which are in some way tied into the advertising on the radio station. Believe me, there's a lot to do, and I'm out of the house a lot. Many times, I uh, take a gig on the weekend, making an appearance or what have you. When I come home, I need quiet. I live on a quiet street in the Hollywood Hills, one that very few people know exists. And uh, you can see the city lights in the distance, but if you uh, face the other way, you're just looking up into the hills. It is quiet. It is dark. It is beautiful. It is wonderful. And most importantly, it's quiet. And I have had experiences where I come home and there's a chick living with me who just won't shut up. I walk in the door and she won't shut up. And um, I will admit that in the past, when I've run into this problem, I had money to throw at the problem. And there were actually times when it got so bad, I would break down and think to myself, what do I have to buy her to make her shut up? Up to it, including one time way back when, when I was a bad boy. And I kept getting asked where I was, what time I was coming home, and what time am I leaving, and when am I going tomorrow, and where am I going next day, and when am I going the next day. What I did was I, I just bought her a goddamn $2,700 tennis bracelet, which bought me about six months of silence. She couldn't stop looking at it. And I looked at that as about $450 a month to shut her mouth. Honestly. Sometimes you buy her something. Sometimes you do something to shut her up. Sometimes you have to go to a chick flick or you have to take her out to dinner once or you have to buy some flowers or some crap. You just have to do something to shut her up. By the way, you can't let her know you're doing it to shut her up. You have to make it look like you're doing it because you love her. I can't tell you how many times I was at the other end of handing over a gift and I was saying, here you go, honey. And I'm thinking to myself, hopefully this will shut your effing mouth. Shut up. Please let this shut you up. I would love, you know, I'd like to get the point across. I'd like to take this little Tiffany box and shove it in your mouth. That's what I'd like to do. I'd like to see you with that big blue box in your mouth going, That's what I would like to see. I mean, I can, I, I, I'm, I'm just being balls out honest with you right now. Many times I bought things when I was married and said, here, honey. But in reality, I'm thinking this better work. This better shut you the hell up because I can't listen anymore. Can't take it. I can't take it anymore. How many times have you handed over flowers, champagne, candy? How many times have you gone to a restaurant and there you were, 
wearing a jacket that you hate wearing. Maybe you wore like a shirt with actual buttons on it. Maybe you wore a tie. There you were waiting in line, you know, at uh, the Olive Garden or wherever you have to go to do your penance. You know, because she has said 40,000 times, maybe we could go on a date sometime. You know, we could go out to dinner and then we could go to a movie. And you just have to, like, put your mind on autopilot. First, I'm going to be eating little garlic knots and stuff. And then I'm going to be going over to the mall. And I'm going to pay $14 a person. And I'm going to go sit down. And I'm going to watch 20 minutes of commercials. And then I'm going to have to watch Lou. I'm going to have to watch, um, I'm sorry. I'm going to have to watch um, Renee Zellweger or Hugh Grant or one of these. I'm going to have to sit and watch this for two and a half hours. George Clooney. I'm, I just know. You just have to put your mind on autopilot. You know, you can still taste that blooming onion in your mouth as you're heading to the mall and you're going to the movie theater and you're just thinking, I hope this does it. And there she is looking like she really pulled something off, you know, and there you are going, all right, if I do this, I'm hoping she's just going to shut up. You've been there, right? How many times have you been doing something with the chick and she looks at you, oh, honey, that's wonderful. Like, like, the, oh, my God, I love you so much. And, and you just think to yourself, this better work. This better shut you up. And by the way, it can be with little things or big things. Every time I see that commercial at Christmas time for Lexus, and they've got the car with the huge bow, that's one of the guys, okay? That guy who gave that Lexus for Christmas, here's what he's saying. Shut up. Shut up. He's not saying, I love you. That's too big a gift to say, I love you with, okay? I love you is a bunch of daisies you picked off the side of the road. Okay, I love you is a card. I love you might be I'm on the road somewhere and I get you a little Eiffel Tower when I was out of town doing business or something. That's I love you. Buying you a forty seven thousand dollar tricked out vehicle with a Lexus nameplate on it or a Mercedes nameplate. That's not I love you. That is I'm having an affair and hopefully this will shut you up. This will stop you from looking in my trunk and looking at my cell phone bills. Hopefully this will do it. As I have said on this program so many times before, ladies, and I'm not kidding, and he'll deny it, but I don't care. Do you think men really like giving tennis bracelets because we love you? You know what a tennis bracelet is, right? It's that bracelet that says full of diamonds, several of them. When a man gives you a... If, there's women wearing a tennis bracelet right now, having a sinking feeling. When a man gives you a tennis bracelet, he's having sex with somebody else. And he knows that a tennis bracelet is the most effective way to get you to stop paying attention and just shut up. I'm not kidding. Oh, those Lexus commercials. I, I love Lexus. I drive a Lexus. I've driven four of them in a row. I'm as loyal to Lexus as the day is long, and they're so good at marketing, and those commercials are very, very effective. But every time I see them, all I can think about, that Lexus with the big bow on top, and the woman jumping up, oh, honey, it's just what I wanted. Uh, th that guy has a problem at home. That's why he bought a gift like that. Hopefully, this will shut you up. It's all about shutting her up. Are you feeling me? 1-800-5800-TOM. Answer the question. I'm trying to, but you keep doing answer, it. Don't answer the question. You're answering questions I didn't ask. I'm asking a specific question. I want an answer to that question. The Tom Likas Show. 97.1 Free FM. SoCal's FM Talk Station. It's... The Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. We appreciate it. What do you do to shut her up? By the way, I've got an email regarding this subject. 
Now, this is stolen from uh, one of those uh, jokes that gets forwarded around a million times in your email. So uh, the guy should have given credit where credit is due, but I'm going to give credit where credit is due. Somebody out there came up with a, uh, they took the De Beers diamond ads and they, they rewrote them. And now it's an email that's been forwarded 8 billion times. But uh, he says here that the De Beers Diamond Company slogan should be changed from diamonds, take her breath away, to diamonds, that'll shut her ass up. He says this is totally true. <laughs> it is totally true. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. It's Mike on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom, how you doing, Tom? Long time, first time. Doing great. I got to admit, I was bad. I was a bad student, but now I'm a good student. I was young and married. Uh, bought her a tennis bracelet because I was sleeping around. She wouldn't leave me alone. It gave me four months of peace and quiet. Then I started listening to you, and I dumped that bitch. All right. Now, I'm 26, divorced. And uh, happily, more than ever. And getting more ass than a toilet seat. Oh, you bet it, Tom. Yeah. Now, why, now you're the second one. I was the first. Uh, yeah. You bought her a tennis basic because you were effing around and you would wanted her to shut up. Right. Every day. Are you talking to this girl? Are you doing this with this girl? Work? And every day I was like, no, baby, just you, just you. Finally, we went to Daniel's jewelry store, bought a nice little tomato jewelry, a tennis bracelet, and she shut up for a little bit. I was like, hey, baby, I can keep this going. And the reason, then, by the way, the reason that works is because women are so easily bought. You, you know like, what? That's the truth. They think if you buy them a tennis bracelet, you must love them. I mean, yeah, I thought you were having an affair, but wow, when you give me a gift like that, it, you couldn't possibly be having an affair. You must love me. Tom, you were the man. I'm kind of upset with you telling the women this one, though. I, I don't I don't think it's going to matter either way. They see the diamonds, they'll still shut up. I think most women aren't listening anyway. And, uh, yes, they shut up. That's, but that, you see, any woman wearing a tennis bracelet is out there right now. I don't care what you think. <laughs> I don't care what back talk, what lip you give me after I said that. I can pretty much guarantee you, if you're wearing a tennis bracelet, it's because the guy you're with is effing somebody else. I agree. That's, that's, that's what's happening. Because no man would voluntarily spend that kind of money on a bracelet. Nope. We just wouldn't do it. <laughs> That's, it's so funny. It's, it's so true. It's funny, Tom. And I wonder how many women out there are going, I never thought of that. <laughs> I never thought of that. I mean, I wonder what kind of gifts guys give chicks just to get them to shut the hell up because they won't shut up. They won't get off our back. If they would just leave us alone, we wouldn't have to buy that stuff, Tom. That's exactly right. And I wonder how many of them are stupid enough to believe that we do this with love and caring. You know, we buy you this because we love you. No, we buy it for you because we want you to back off. Back off and shut up. You know how I shut mine up finally? Served it with divorce papers. That shuts them right up. And right. How did she react when you dumped her? Um... Actually, not good. She broke into my house. She's broken windows. She's uh, stolen my car. So she stole crazy. your car. <laughs> my car, Tom. Holy crap! <laughs> Did you get crazy, it back? But... Did you get it back? No. Uh, the Did... police would not get involved. But wait a minute. Is she still married to you? Well, at the time she was. Oh boy. So at the time she was. They wouldn't do anything. I mean, I took them to her house where the car was. I showed them the restraining order. They did not care. Holy cow. But so, that's why uh, it's so good for you, for kids to listen to you so they don't make the same mistake I did, get married at 19 and divorced by 24. This is what happens. I, I You know what? I, my brother turned me on to you, and, and it was the worst thing for my marriage, but the best thing for me. Love it. All right, thanks a lot, Tom. Thank you. You have a good day. Appreciate that. There you go. $1,200 on a test bracelet. And uh, he was effing around, too. No guy, come on, that is suspicious. No guy would give you a tennis bracelet. 
<laughs> Are you kidding? Voluntarily we would spend that kind of money? You're kidding me, right? You are kidding me, right? Never would I spend that kind of money unless there was some reason I needed to get you to shut up. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Sergio on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, what's up, Tom? Not much. Yeah, I just want to call and let you know, you know, I, there's nothing that I will shut my wife up. Really? Yeah, you know, I, I give her my paycheck every week, and, and still, I still can't go out and have a couple of drinks with my friends, or, you know, and I, I can't even talk to my own brother. Why do you give your wife your paycheck? Well, because she's, uh, I got four kids, you know what I mean, and, you know. So? She she could put some away for me. I, I really don't have no excuse, you know what I'm saying? Why don't you put the money away yourself? Uh, you know, I, I I like to go out there and spend, you know. I like to uh, um, be like, you know, one of them attention whores where I just be spending money on women and, and, you know. Wait, you're married and you have kids, but you like to spend money on women, so you have to ask your wife for money so you go out and meet chicks? There you go. I, I'm just trying, I'm trying to live off my looks now, Tom. Come on, you're full of crap. I, uh, uh, long time listener, everyday caller, I'm telling you. Yeah, but I don't believe what you're saying. I don't believe you. That's for me. I don't believe you that you go to your wife and ask her for money. You don't go to mommy and say, please give me some money so I go out and pick up checks. You don't. Well, no, I, I, maybe I'll save $100 out of my check, you know, but. Why don't you take the whole check and give her $100? I, th I thought it would shut her up to tell you the truth. Holy, wh why are you married? I, I have four kids, you know. Hey, I, I was talking to you last time. Remember I told you take me out gangster? You say you sure like a you sure sound like a gangster to me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, G. Thank you. Was oh, that Kanye West? He's not saying G anymore. Okay, good. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. Let's say hello here to uh, Julie on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you? Great. Good. I have a totally different theory as to why men buy their women diamonds. And that is not to shut them up necessarily, but because men look good if their wives have big diamonds. I don't agree with that. I think that's a woman's point of view. Uh, from a man's point of view, um, I would just easily buy you CZ just to shut you up. Well, I'd, I'd take a nice CZ as well, but <laughs> I think the point is that you know, my husband for our 10th anniversary bought me a beautiful big diamond, and I think it's because, or I know it's because, he admitted it to me, it made him feel good to know that I'm walking around with a big old diamond on my finger. Uh, I, You know what? He's a pussy. I, that certainly would make me feel good to know you were, you had a horrible investment. May I say, diamonds are, uh, in the world of investments, horrible investments. I totally agree with that. It wasn't for an investment. It's because... It just makes him look. It makes him look good. It makes him come off. But it doesn't make him look good. I'll tell you what. As a man, if I see you wearing a big diamond, I'm saying this guy's a sucker. Okay. Well. Or he's having an affair with somebody else. <laughs> well, that's definitely not the case. But you know what? Well, you don't know that. Yeah, I do. No, you I don't. Do. No, you don't. <laughs> I do. Where is he now? He's at work. That's what he told like, you. No, you don't actually, know. you know what? He's in the dentist chair right now. So. Right. He's getting some oral surgery. I'm sure. Look, uh, you don't know what he's doing, and you don't know if he's had an affair. You've been married 10 years. It's it's, it's fairly likely he has had an affair. Mm, no. You know, I know you say, you know, you hate to hear about exceptions to the rules, whatever. But, but everybody thinks they are the exception to the rule. That's why I hate to hear about it, because the same people who call this show and say, I'm the exception to the rule, Tom, they call me two years later. They go, Tom, I called you a couple of years ago, and I was wrong. I thought I knew more than you did. I mean, I hear this all the time. Well, you know, I, also, I I think you're sad and a little bit jaded, but... <laughs> I'm not sad, dear. I'm the happiest I've ever been. Well, and that's that's great. Good for you. Thank you. I hear you, I hear you tell your story about your uncle coming home from working long hours in this tunnel and I going up and shutting himself in his room. That's not happy. <laughs> I didn't say that he was happy. I'm saying that he did not want to hear his wife or the rest of us talking. And I, and you know what? That's, that's really sad to me. Why are you, I mean, just leave then. Don't be with somebody if you can't stand to hear them talk. Well, the fact is, it's not that they, they shouldn't talk at all. It's that they can't shut up. 
I I agree with that. Women tend to talk too much, and I too much. Change, women think we are women, and they talk to us like we're women. Okay, and we're not. We no. have no interest in idle chit chat. I, you know what? And my husband is maybe he's a pussy, but he'll have you know sit there and nod. And I've come to the point after ten years where I don't care if he's reading the paper or doing his computer. I just talk just to talk. <laughs> And that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I know, and I, I admit it. I, I will totally admit it. But I also just... That would drive me insane. <laughs> well, maybe I do drive him insane. You'd but... have, you know what? I'd, by now, I probably, in, in my past life, I would have bought you the big diamond. <laughs> Hoping against hope you'd spend your time staring at it and, and stop talking to me. Oh, you know what, though? Maybe I'm the exception. I mean, you stare at it for the first time. Everybody minutes, but... <laughs> thinks they're the exception. Everybody. I know, I know. I I hear you talking, and you know what? I think the best thing that you do for women is make all the dumb women out there know what these guys are doing. So I think you provide a very good service for women. And you <laughs> thank you. Thank you, dear. I appreciate the call. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom. Wendy on a car phone. You're on the Tom Likens show. Hello. Hi. How you doing? Do you care, Wendy? Do I care? Yeah. About what? The Tom Likas Show. 97.13 FM. SoCal's FM Talk Station. It's the Tom Likas Show at 1 800 800 Tom. That's our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. We appreciate it. And here we are. Talking about the gifts you buy for her just to get her to shut up. Have you done that? <laughs> but you have. 1-800-5800-TOM is her telephone number. Lisa on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you? Great. Good. I was just calling because you're talking about, you know, buying, you know, items for women to shut them up. Actually, what I'm calling for is not about buying items for women, but it's for you, for instance. This is what you do for a living is you talk for three and four and five hours a day nonstop. That's what you get paid for is to talk, correct? Well, I especially don't want to talk when I come home, but I got to tell you that uh, I don't think it matters whether you talk or whether you have physical activity at work, like you're a construction worker, you drive a truck or a bus. I think that at the end of the day, a man does not want to come home and chit chat about nothing. Well, I, 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 I agree about that, Tom. But what I'm saying, though, is you, you like to talk. I mean, you talk. That's what you get paid for. So no, I but, when I, but that doesn't mean I like to, that doesn't mean I like to do it in my free time. No, I understand that. That's that's what I'm. The point I'm getting to is because you like to talk all day long, and that's your job. No, no, wait, stop, you stop. You're assuming I like to talk at my job. Well, if you didn't like to talk at your job, you wouldn't be doing what you're doing now. Dear, what do you do for a living? I work for an office. I'm in. I, I'm in the office. Well, what kind of company is it? What you don't have to tell us the company. It's, it's, what, a, it's a distribution company. Do you like working in distribution? Yes, I like working distribution. And you, I like doing what I'm doing right now. You like it a lot. Would you do it if you weren't being paid to do it? Um, sure. I mingle with people. I, I enjoy mingling. So if they people. told you tomorrow they were taking your paycheck to away, you would just continue to show up? Absolutely not. I wouldn't show up. I'd go get another job. So you don't like it that much? Well... I guess you have a point there. Of course, I don't and like. That's it. the point I, I make like it to you. Much, why do you assume that? I, why would you assume because I do this for a living that I that I like doing it or that I like doing it any more than I have to? If there were some way I could fabricate that would get you to do all the work while I just sit here, mm -hmm. I'd be doing that. Absolutely, I I totally agree with you. But my I I just call because my point. Let me give you an example. Okay.
Do you see what I'm saying? I understand what you're saying. Did it cut off, Keith? I don't think I'm on. No, no, you are on. Oh, my gosh. I'm sorry, Tom. I was sitting here. I didn't think I was on. It was just the phone went dead. I was giving okay. you an example. I'm I'm sorry, but you know what? When you said, let me give you an example, the phone went dead. and I No, it didn't go happened. dead. I, it did not go dead. I went dead. Oh, gosh, Tom. Why are you doing this to me? I was giving you an example. Oh, I understand. And I like that example because, believe it or not, in my relationship, the, the relationship that I'm in right now, there's nothing better than coming home and being in the same room and have absolute si absolute silence. But you assume because I sit here and talk that I like talking. No, it's my job. I have to. For example, somebody's paying me to talk to you. You think if I met you in public, I would voluntarily have a conversation with you? Absolutely not. Oh, you probably would. No, no. Oh, yes, you would. Not unless I thought but I could unzip your fly. Absolutely not. <laughs> No. <laughs> no, but what what I was getting at, Tom, was... You're just, blushing. I, Look not... at you. Oh, Tom, come on now. I don't blush that easy. I'd make you blush before you made me blush. Really? Guaranteed. Uh, how about tonight about 9.30? Oh, gosh, I'm sorry. I'm busy tonight. Bet you are. I'm busy, but um, anyways, it was nice talking to you, Tom. Sure was. And I do agree with about 90% of what you have to say, and I do think you're going to find that special person in your life, and you're well, going to be happy. Stop it. Stop it. I am oh, happy, yes, dear. No, dear, I am happy. <laughs> this is the part you don't understand. I'm happy today. I, You know what? I'm happy today, too, and I'm not married, and I will never get married. Yeah, but you have a boyfriend or something. I, you're, the, you're the type. Yes, I do have a boyfriend. I know you. I know you do. There's no papers. There's no ring, and he doesn't have to buy me jewelry to keep me happy. He just needs to be quiet when we're at home, and that that makes me happy. He lives with you. Yes. Oh, see, I would never go that far. Well, you know, I know you wouldn't go that far, but there's thousands and hundreds of thousands of people out there that do. I mean, we can't. Yes, we and I've seen the divorce rate. <laughs> yes, yeah, but we can't, you know, take everything that you tell us. You know, we can't We can't live by everything. I mean, that's that's well, why you, you have your Yeah, you service, could. I guess. Well, you could. We could, but not everybody is, you know. Every, some Happy have like I am? Yes, I agree. Huh? I'm sorry? Not everybody's happy like I am. Yeah, I, I agree yeah. with you. Yeah, if everybody was happy like you, Tom, this world would be so boring. No, I think it'd be a lot more interesting. Oh, come on! It would be it would be boring. We might as well move to Utah or something, you know, and it'd be boring. <laughs> I'd be in my hot tub making a little tortilla soup and uh, be fantastic. Oh, absolutely! If you know what I mean? Yeah. All right, Tom. Well, thank you for taking my call, and good luck to you, and thank and you. I'll keep on listening. Can right. you <laughs> blow me up somehow? Yes, I can. I don't think she got the example. <laughs> one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. Here comes Nathan on the Tom Like His Show. Hello, Nathan. Hello, Tom. How are you doing today? Great. That's good. I got a story here for you. you might find interesting. When I was 18, I had a girlfriend, and uh, she and I moved in together, and I ended up starting to just hate her because she kept talking, talking, talking. And I sort of had the same concept you did, only it was in reverse. See, instead of buying her something, I went out and bought myself a motorcycle. Really? And, uh, yeah. Love she that. Was, uh, she was so mad at me that she didn't talk to me for a couple weeks. Fantastic. That means you can also uh, F other chicks in the meantime. That's a perfect situation. Well, I, I love, I later. love, by the way, I love when women punish me by not talking to me for a period of time. <laughs> but the, uh, that, uh, that, that's like a get out of jail free card. Are you kidding me? Yeah, that's sort of how Let it me works understand. You, you, you are not going to talk to me for the next couple of weeks? And that means that I, you're not going to know where I am or what I'm doing. And that means that I won't have to report to headquarters every move I make. This is punishment? Okay. Uh, that's what I thought, too, partner. Love anyway, it. Could you, could you blow me up, Tom? Yes, I can. 
1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Let's say hello to Summer on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi. Hi. My name is, uh, I was calling to see what you're thinking about, you know, like girls that buy their guys the really expensive gifts. I think they're desperate. Because, like me, my man does not approve of what I do because I am a stripper. There's nothing exotic about stripping. I just, I'm just a stripper. And so I'm also really jealous. Like, I'm, I'm mean to him. So I basically buy him, you know, really expensive watches and all this other stuff just to shut him up. I mean, like, you know, what's your take on that? Well, you're doing the same thing. I'm, I'm not saying that it's you know, necessary for uh, according to gender. I mean, whoever has the most money will probably use money to shut the other person up. Yeah, like, I don't cheat on him or, cheat on him or anything. I'm just really mean to him, so I just buy him things to make up. Well, I happen to think if you're sitting in a private room having lap dances with strangers, that's as good as cheating. That's the same thing. Yeah, it is pretty close because I am naked. <laughs> right. But it, it's not, like... Stripping is not really cheating because I don't. Stop. They don't, no, touch no. Me. dear, dear. Look, do whatever you have to do for a living. I, I, whatever floats your boat, but don't use that claptrap on me that you use on your boyfriend. I would date a stripper, but never in a million years would I have one as a girlfriend or a wife. Not in a million billion years, never. It, it's not like they're touching me or anything. Yes, they just sit there and look at me. They are, t dear. When you have a lap dance, they're touching you. Oh, I have never let anyone touch me. Don't you ever. touch their lap? I touch their legs. Yeah, that's touching. Well, they don't touch me. Darling. And I don't touch any Again, why you, dear, I'm not your boyfriend. Don't give me all these nonsense excuses. I'm never going to buy in. If you found some sucker who has bought in, fantastic. Good for you. But don't don't BS a BSer. Boy, that's true. You know, tell that tell the excuses to him as you're buying him expensive things. But don't tell it to me. All right, I'll keep that one in mind. You do that. <laughs> she couldn't keep a straight face. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Oh, we get a wise guy on the phone here. This is Mike. Mike is about to try to ambush me here. Now, watch his technique. Let's judge his technique as we put him on the air. Let's see how good he is at insulting me. Mike, hello. Hi, Tom. Thanks. Um, yeah, I just wanted to say that uh, you act like you don't care at all about talking and you, know, you don't want to do it, but it's pretty clear to everyone listening that you obviously love talking. Why is that You're true? in radio. Uh, that doesn't mean you love talking. What do you do for a living? Um, I'm a student. Really? Do you love school? Um, actually, yeah. The, you, you love know, the it. The subjects I'm studying. No, no, but do you, uh, do you love all the subjects you're studying? Do you love having to go to school? Uh, not all the time, no. Why not? You go to school, you must love it. Well, I mean, you go for a reason. Well, and that's why I'm here. I, you think I would spend my time talking to a yutz like you uh, if somebody wasn't paying me to do it? Oh, no. Don't but flatter yourself. Obviously Don't you flatter love. yourself. Don't flatter yourself. I'm only talking to you because there's a gun to my head. If oh, I don't talk to you, I won't get paid. This has nothing to do with me. Oh, so. yeah. Uh, well, actually, it does. At least during the minute and eight seconds you're going to get on the air here. Thank you so much, darling. The Tom Likas Show. 97.1 FM. SoCal's FM Talks.